Welcome to the Liberating Generations podcast, where we talk about liberating generational trauma from the habit patterns of your not just external family system, but also your internal groups of parts that make up your false self and help you find your true nature. I am so happy to be back here with my beautiful daughter who co-hosts this podcast with me, Reagan Claire. Hi, Reagan. Hi, mom. Thanks for having me. Oh my goodness. So we're starting a series of conversations because Thanksgiving's coming up and we'd like to offer some conversations in this podcast that make from here to the new year a little more intentional and perhaps conscious so that you're not just sort of stumbling through the holiday row. I call it the row. <laughs> holiday row, right? We we were already in it. Started at Halloween. Yes. And sometimes people will sit down and make a whole bunch of New Year's resolutions. And there's a little bit of a stereotype around that where the gyms are full until March. <laughs> and everybody that has their favorite machines can get back to them again. Mm-hmm. As everyone gets off after the first three years or three months of like, I'm going to go to the gym every day. And then, and then those don't, those resolutions don't get held to. And I think that can create some shame, mm-hmm. and, you know, internally, like, oh, I can never stick to things. I, you know, that kind of thing. So this episode, Reagan and I are going to talk a little bit about helping you identify some core values so that this will be a value-driven holiday season uh, with a conscious movement into the new year coming from staying integrity with the values that you are identifying as the most important to you right now. And those change from time to time as you grow and develop into new stages of development. So we're just going to play with that today. Does that sound like fun? Yes, 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 yes. So excited. Yeah, this sounds like a good Thanksgiving dinner around the table kind of conversation, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. And if you can start thinking about those core values now, then you're going to have such a great brainstorming session around Thanksgiving dinner table. (laughs) Right. And I think sharing because the people that are with you are probably people that are in your community. Mm -hmm. And you have then a built-in accountability partnership. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you think about core values that are important to you, should, you know, what, what are some examples of core values, Reagan? We already named one that immediately jumps to my mind, which is integrity. Mm. Yeah. I think integrity to yourself in turn creates integrity to the people in your life. You're able to hold integrity with the people who you surround yourself with. Yeah. And so like you were saying about making these outlandish New Year's resolutions where I'm going to go to the gym every morning at 6 a.m. and I'm going to do cold plunges and I'm going to eat really healthy and I'm going to do all the things that I've said I'm going to do uh, all at once. It's not real. It's not super realistic. And that's why oftentimes people fall off of their resolutions after that three month mark, um, maybe even a couple of weeks in. And it's a lack of integrity with your agreement to yourself. And so I think something we should also talk about is making realistic goals, realistic short-term goals so that you can stay in integrity with yourself. Well, this is why I didn't even use the word goal and, you know, kind of came down a little bit on the idea of a New Year's resolution. And I'm curious what our our audience thinks about this. We'd love to hear your feedback. But coming from a place of core values means that internally, you already have this woven in to the structure of your being that lies beyond your felt self. 
Mm-hmm. So then if you already know that your true nature is like Christ consciousness or Buddha nature or expansive luminosity, pure awareness, however you want to talk about it, Rigpa, if you, if you know, at least have an intellectual understanding of that, perhaps through your spiritual practices and life, you've been able to have some realization of that, then goals that come from a false self that deems how, what you achieve and produce is what builds your worth mm-hmm. it starts to dissolve. Mm-hmm. So I think goal orientation sometimes falls into that place rather than how do I want to show up in the world? How do I want to be of service? What do I want to stand for? Who who do I want to be in the service of the divine? That's more about core values. Yes. Right? And that way we're not setting ourselves up for, okay, if I don't get this list done, you know, the Mm -hmm. Enneagram type ones have the hardest time with this because they're perfectionists by all of us have some perfectionism, but the Enneagram type one will set a lot of goals and have this very long task list. And then it becomes a bully. Yes. The internal critic is always going off. You haven't done that yet. You're not doing that well enough. How come you're not, you know, they're like, Mm -hmm. and so there's this critic and this manager that are in there that are just, you know, relentlessly driving. Oh my gosh. Are you, I, I have a very strong sense of what that feels like before I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. That is how I live my life. <laughs> it's completely driven by those voices. And so this is something different. It's mm-hmm. identifying that voice of the ones who are critical, right? Setting that aside with love and compassion and saying, you know, no, that's not what we're doing here. Our ego can co-opt any kind of practice, right? And so what we're doing is making sure it doesn't co-opt this. Yes. So I love integrity as a core value. Authenticity is another one. I love adventure. Being willing to, oh, I'm going to mess this up. Stop. <laughs> go and go where no one has been before. Star Trek. And uh, <laughs> To me, that means the unchartered territory of the mind that is your own way of perceiving, right? And the imprints of the past, like being able to uh, go out into places where those no longer are the motivating factors. Mm -hmm. Adventure. Yeah. I love that. I think compassion is a huge one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, kind of along the lines of what you were saying, allowing the ego to kind of take a back seat for a second and having compassion with yourself. It's not the endless to do's. It's yes, staying in integrity with yourselves as much as possible. But then if it slips off, not. Yeah. A really good example of this is a conversation you and I had recently on the phone, for those of you that don't know, Reagan's in the Bay Area in grad school studying to become a chiropractor. And, you know, so we connect on the phone and, and then we also do this podcast. And, and so we were on the phone and we were talking about, you know, the, the way that you show up for yourself, which is what this compassion is, you know, in a compassionate way. And then we are talking about how when partners come into our lives, friends, uh, other parts of our community or, you know, people we just meet, if that, and this is what I was speaking to earlier about core values being intrinsic, if, if that core value is not identified as intrinsic and deeply implanted in there like compassion, right, then if there's something that's that you want, you know, like I, oh, I want to really connect with this person and then start reading them to see how you think they want you to show up for them. Yeah. That you're abandoning yourself. 
And one of the things that I was saying is I'm noticing that uh, there are people that have been coming into my life recently who are, uh, when I decided to live from a place of authenticity, uh, are commenting on that and saying, like, I want to have practice that's as deeply held and devotional as how I observe you in life. And so they're reaching mm -hmm. for that bar and mm -hmm. I'm not turning and saying, well, I wonder if that's going to be uncomfortable for them, which I would have done <laughs> in my any a type two way, you mm -hmm. know, always reading another person to see like, is this connection? What do I need to do to change myself to make this yes. right available? And you mm -hmm. said in that moment, mom, I really needed to hear that, mm -hmm. right? Because I raised you and you're an India type two, just like your sister, which is not, remember our Enneagram type is not who we are, it's strategy. And so being able to, you know, track that for yourself, you just went, oh. yeah, I need to encourage people to reach up, not reach down to make them feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I think compassion is authenticity and compassion. A couple of these that we've mentioned as core values are really important elements in that. Yeah. 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 It kind of, we've talked about this in a previous episode before, but it's that crab pot mentality mm -hmm. of when you're around a certain environment where the desire is to go to sleep, then it's staying in integrity with your core values at all costs and and living by example and and just like and as yummy as it might feel to go it's go to that level that is numbing out as a group right because it can feel really really good to to do that instead being the outlier and standing really strong in your power and in your integrity and gently guiding the way saying you can come over here, but I'm not going over there mm -hmm. exactly. with compassion. Mm -hmm. Right. Lack of judgment is what compassion is. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really a great way of stating it. And I think this also speaks to adventure, which is another one that we just talked about a minute ago is if, if you're the, you know, like crab fishermen don't have to put a lid on the crab pot when they're catching crab. Because the the when one crab's trying to get over the rim, the others pull them down. And, you know, the adventure part is being willing to want to go over the rim and out onto the beach without the people that you know have been holding you mm -hmm. or you willingly held with them a place where you're not completely awake. It's like, okay. And that also speaks to another core value, which is autonomy. Yes. And making sure that you're taking full responsibility, that your locus of control is completely internalized. You're not blaming any circumstance in life, any person, God, anything, right? For your circumstances that you're living today. And if there are any in there that you're not happy with, that you're not seeking an outside uh, place to rest that justification for staying in the crab pot. Yes. Mm -hmm. so I think autonomy is another great core value. Now, that, what else for you? I think generosity. Mm. Generosity is a big core value. Yeah. Generosity sometimes... So if fault self is being generous, yes, we as any type twos can really track this one. So if yeah. fault self is <laughs> being generous, <laughs> generosity has a price. It's got a, it's got a, a string attached to it. Like, okay, I'm going to be super generous. I'm going to give you everything I think you need. And then when the time comes, I will ask or I will want you to just show up for me, <laughs> right, in a reciprocal way. And so... So how does generosity land for you from a place of like true self? Generosity 
honestly, what jumps to mind is staying in my true self. Mm -hmm. That's generosity to me. Holding people to a standard that they don't even, that they've never been held to. That's generous. As you are holding yourself to that. Exactly. Yeah. I used to hate the word potential because uh, you remember, I used to talk to you about this Uh, back when I was still drinking. uh, I hated the word potential because it made, or I hated the term, you have so much potential because it insinuated that we weren't already our best versions of ourselves and that we weren't good enough. And so I've kind of changed my narrative around that though, of you have so much potential because I see it now. I'm like, yeah, I do have so much potential. And yes, I'm living my potential, but there's also, I, I, <laughs> I don't know how, do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I remember having this conversation uh, when I was younger than you, probably when you started having this conversation with me, with my father. Yeah. You know, he would say, I'm so proud of you. And yet I would internally say, I don't think I've reached my potential. There's nothing to be proud of. Yeah. Right. And, and it was a self-critical perfectionism yes. that got in the way of that. Yeah. So now generosity to me is seeing the potential on people mm-hmm. and not allowing the people in my world to go to sleep, continuing to pull them to their potential. Ooh, I just had all kinds of alarm bells go off. Not pulling, inviting. <laughs> inviting. inviting, sorry. Yeah, that's- Yeah, we don't want to do more work for the people around us than they're doing for themselves. Very true. And, yeah. and, what, I, what, I, and what I mean by that is, as you already said, leading by example. I'm, I'm, con- I'm consistently checking in with myself of, okay, are you, are you staying in alignment with yourself? Are you in integrity with yourself? And it, that's all you can do. It's, yeah. I remember a mentor of mine saying this to me uh, a long time ago. Her name was Gina Ogden. And she said, um, make sure, and because I would check in and do like case studies with her in my, uh, when I was getting my PhD in sexology. And, and as I would go through cases with her, she'd say, make sure you're not working harder than your client. Yeah. Make sure you're not pontificating. <laughs> I, I will never forget those two things. Make sure you're not pontificating and make sure you're not working harder than your client. Mm-hmm. So it's always invitational, right? Yeah. 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 I love and, I love and making it. sure you're invited to do that. You know, it's an agreement right. that you made with, with, and I've made those agreements. It's not the old unskillful two in me would just be going around giving up all of the unsolicited advice. <laughs> I have the answers. Do you want to hear them? <laughs> or, or I have the answers I'm going to tell you. <laughs> yeah. So we've learned, we've grown a little bit. <laughs> I like creativity as a core value too. Mm. And curiosity, creativity, curiosity, and contribution. Like I love all, all three of those. If I'm curious, then that allows creativity to flow. And if contribution is at the core motivation for that then all three of them are interrelated yeah how about humility oh that's such a beautiful one so beautiful yeah i really like that one i think until this has been my experience until i was able to really get humbled i wasn't ready to face my shadows which we all have. We all have shadows. They're so cute. They're so cute. Yeah. They're so cute when they pop up. They are. Yeah. I, I love humility. That one's a really beautiful one. And, you know, humility doesn't mean that you self denigrate. No, it's the opposite. Mm-hmm. And it, it doesn't mean there's a woman I've recently been working with who is a professor in the, in the university. And, you know, she, I talked to her about the structure of how she was hoping to get to ten, to be tenured. And, and it was 
to have her students be so appreciative of her that they would, you know, just kind of shepherd her into that space. And it didn't work. It hadn't worked. In fact, blew up for her. And, and I said, rather, it's important that you're able to say through this incarnated beings design karma gifts that are embedded in you this time through uh the offering the contribution the creativity the knowledge that's come through you has made this gigantic uh impact in her field and yet she had that sort of like self-deprecating wouldn't talk about it and Mm -hmm. i said so then life can't meet you Mm -hmm. right (laughs) because your ego is the one that's saying oh the tall poppy has to be mown down that's that's what they say in australia or don't toot your own horn right and and then we we kind of have this false idea about that that's humility yeah we don't toot our own horn and And I was telling her that one of my favorite, most beautiful Ayurvedic teachers, Dr. Vasant Lad, one day he was drawing this very complex diagram on the board and explaining uh, one of the principles of Ayurveda. And as he stood back from the board, he just cocked his head and put his finger up to his cheek and held his chin in his hands and said, hmm. The artist today is very inspired. And I remember thinking, wow, like it was said with complete humility and yet this gratitude for the creativity that was flowing through as a contribution. And there was no pride there. It was completely, it was completely humble the way that he said it. And yet he was also saying, this is an amazing diagram. Right. And it was such a great teaching for me. <laughs> it's like, wow, that was so beautiful to watch somebody say that about the work that came through them instead of our sort of puritanical uh, Western tradition of, you know, like pride goeth before the fall, you know, and it's, it's mm-hmm. false humility, right? Yes. Yes. Um, that was beautifully said. So uh, I really like humor as a core value. (laughs) And this is another one at the Thanksgiving table that has gone sideways many a time in our family Mm -hmm. because humor takes on so many different flavors, doesn't it? And sarcasm is Mm -hmm. one of the flavors that comes through from my father. (laughs) Yes. I I learned it real well. I have a very sharp tongue and a very quick wit. And until we started recognizing sarcasm as a form of aggression, it was part of our, and then I started pointing it out. We started practicing, right? We don't have to. And in fact, it's a form of aggression and hostility and even abuse to get a laugh at the expense of somebody else. So humor, making sure it's clean, just like humility, right? Absolutely. I still have a hard time with that one. Yeah, you and I, we have really fast mouths. (laughs) We have really fast mouths. (laughs) We love it when we can make people laugh. So humor can also be a uh, cloaking device, right? I'll mm-hmm. entertain you so you can't get close to me or you can't. What do you mean? Yeah. You don't know me. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have some members of our family, including ourselves, but definitely know what, how that looks, right? Just it, the, it's part of false self. Mm-hmm. But it works so well. I know. I it know. works so well. <laughs> a really good strategy and stunned me well i like that that (laughs) family is now conscious of this and Mm -hmm. bringing some integrity and some honesty and some authenticity to it and witnessing it without judgment bringing compassion Mm -hmm. and making sure kindness which is another core value Mm -hmm. it's part of humor that yeah 
Well, I think also bringing humor to the fact that it's a coping mechanism, I think that brings some lightness to it. It does. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, everything doesn't have to be taken so seriously. It's okay to be able to laugh at just how funny life is. <laughs> and we can laugh at ourselves and we can laugh at, you know, I mean, uh, I was doing a plant medicine journey facilitating and I said something really ridiculous. And I said, I just didn't sound very cool right there, did I? <laughs> and I started yeah. laughing. And it gave everybody this opportunity to laugh about the human condition of, you know, like, oh, I'm really not cool right here. Mm -hmm. and, and, and everyone can laugh in this sort of camaraderie of what every single one of us have experienced at some point in time. And it was, mm -hmm. it was like this very authentic, uh, compassionate kindness that I was showing to myself when I said it, not self-deprecating, but it was like, oh, that really didn't sound very cool, did it? You know, and then yeah. it was laughing. And it was like this laughter of letting go of, of a held on to tension about needing to be cool in front of a group that everybody mm -hmm. could release at the same time, right? Needing to say the right thing all the time. Exactly. Needing to sound intelligent all the time. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah. And since going through menopause, I lose words all the time. And I say that now, like, oh, I just lost a word. And, yeah. uh, and, and I have so much patience for it where my 30 year old self would not have been patient with that and would have felt some anxiety about it. <laughs> Where's my steel trap mind? I really liked you. Where have you gone? <laughs> yeah. I remember at the beginning of menopause, you had a much harder time with it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Watching your progression of just re releasing it and accepting it and having fun with it instead of making meaning out of it has been really beautiful to witness. Yeah. Good. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because actually now it's kind of fun. Like, oh, well, there went that word <laughs> back someday. I know. Yeah. You, you going through menopause and saying, yeah, it's just menopause and mama. And then the rest of the family being like, oh, slash, you're just human. This happens to normal humans all the time. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. I, uh, I love another core value, uh, loyalty. Are yes. you, are you loyal and dedicated to the path? I don't really want to call it path. Uh, like the vision you have of what it means to live a full life for yourself, like your individual purpose in life. Are you staying loyal to that? Are you loyal to the people in your life? Uh, do you behave in a way, i.e. with compassion and integrity and love and curiosity that elicits loyalty from those around you? Do you then create boundaries when that isn't present? Yeah, I love that. Well, we've given our listeners a lot to chew on. We have. I have a couple more. Are you done? Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of core values. <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to give them some ideas because the ones we're picking out are the ones that we find <gasps> meaningful. But right. I, uh, just because my my uh, therapy work with people, I think trust and being trustworthy mm -hmm. is one that is really, and self-respect, both of those. Uh, but being... I think trust gets, it gets broken a lot when we go through the inevitable <laughs> heartbreak, betrayal, and traumas of life. And we have plenty of evidence where life people in it maybe are not trustworthy and will view from a place of not feeling safe. Can I trust this? And I think one of the things that we work with in our medicine circles a lot is to say that you can trust that people will hurt you. Mm -hmm. You can trust that you will hurt others. You can trust that you will be a disappointment and that you will disappoint. Mm -hmm. You can trust that uh, you will let people down and that you'll get let down. You know, I think that that's 
that's the thing that trust always comes up with is, can I trust that this isn't going to change? Or can I trust you that you're not going to hurt me? But that's, that's not trusting. And that's, that's asked the false self is asking for that. It's not trusting in what the human condition is supposed to be, which is it will have heartbreak, betrayal, and drama, you know, and that you can trust that that will happen. And then trust, be trustworthy and trust in something much larger than the thing that you're asking to trust. So, right. And, and I remember I had a, I had a psilocybin journey about this. It was all about trust. And, and I was being shown all these things that we try and trust and that are like in the three little pigs. Yep. The, a government and then we're going to stall. Yeah. The big bad wolf comes and blows yep. down houses, straw and the house of sticks. Right. And, and we're trying to, we're trying to have something that nothing can, can change. We want it to be permanent. And actually that's just not the way life works. You know, it's just, everything's impermanent. And so we want to trust that we'll have some kind of security and safety that will remain always there. And so then if we move into trusting that source or the divine or wisdom, the universe, the universe, God is actually part of your nature and trust in that <laughs> and allow the other things to fall apart when they're meant to, that, that that's not a betrayal of your trust. If you have cancer or you have autoimmune disease, your body didn't betray you. It's, you know, the move is not to stop trusting your body. And the move is to move into a collaborative curiosity with your body and say, what are you trying to tell me? How can I support you? So I think trust gets triggered a lot from old mm-hmm. trauma, right? Yeah. And I mean, that is a big concept that you work with people a long time for them to finally get to that point. So it's absolutely worth unpacking. And I think coming to a retreat or scheduling a special, scheduling a session with you one-on-one to really start unpacking that concept is, yeah. would be so beneficial. If you're listening and you, you think that this is a completely outlandish idea, <laughs> this might be helpful. <laughs> Yeah. Don't put your trust in the stock market. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, I think even, even our partners, you know, it's yeah. Our partner, I, our friends, our family members. Uh, we, I think there's a desire to want to put our trust in those things, but there, I mean, no matter what, our trust will be broken at some point. Mm-hmm, because we might be trusting the wrong thing and so then if the commitment and the loyalty is there to repairing mm-hmm. right when something falls apart and it, and then it's a call to a larger skill set and a more expanded awareness you know then it it isn't really about trust it's about increasing your communication skills with yourself and whoever else it is mm-hmm. and so you know, and then absolutely, if somebody lies all the time, then you have boundary with them. You know, like, right? So, yeah. So discernment of of what's going on with that too. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I like to add in wisdom as sort of like my last one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the pathway from innocence when we're born to wisdom when we leave the planet, right, is going through heartbreak, betrayal, and trauma, and then into compassionate self-confrontation, self-inquiry, into healing and transforming trauma into wisdom. And then the byproduct of that is compassion, where if you get stuck in your trauma story, in your victim story, then the byproduct of that is resentment. So Mm -hmm. we can kind of rest into where are we? What are our cells bathing themselves in? You know, mm-hmm. do that work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll do another episode on of what to do with these core values in terms of creating 
a sort of integrity report for yourself, a little mm -hmm. exercise you can do. And in that way, can take you into the new year. Then in the meantime, it'd be fun to do this around Thanksgiving. Like, what are you thankful for? And mm -hmm. how do your core values inform what you're thankful for? Yeah. Love that. All right. I'm excited about this. I'm excited for our Thanksgiving dinner because this is Me definitely going to be part of it. It's going <laughs> to be very juicy. What we usually talk about is if you're in a coma, what do you want to hear in terms of music or something to be read to you? <laughs> as you can, as you probably have imagined based on our conversation for Thanksgiving, <laughs> our Thanksgivings are really light. We also have a good time. We have a lot of laughs. <laughs> but I'll never forget my brother and his family being at Thanksgiving and we were talking about that subject matter, like conscious dying. And mm -hmm. all right, have you changed your playlist? Have you changed what you want to hear? Have you changed anything about like if you're in a coma, what do you need from us? Mm -hmm. And my brother was just kind of like, what are we talking about and why? <laughs> yeah, so good. Oh. <laughs> The stuff that you wish you knew when it's too late that you need to talk about before, right? Before it happens. All right. Well, everybody have a fantastic Thanksgiving. May it be filled with gratitude and appreciation for everything just as it is. And a great big dose of radical acceptance if it's not what you want and a pathway through that. Mm. Yes. So grateful for you. Ah, oh, so grateful for you. I love you. I love you too. And we love all of you. And until next time, be well. <laughs>